When I was young, I never really went uh, to hunting camp. New Hampshire is a little bit different than other places in the country. We lived, you know, within a day, with, within a hour or so drive of just about everywhere where we hunted deer. Uh, you know, uh, leave the house, go hunt deer, you're home for supper. Uh, Daddy would go to hunting camp uh, after a while, after I turned about 13 or 14, he would go up to hunting camp up to Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, but I never went with him, and I think it's probably because of what happened at hunting camp. It wasn't appropriate for teenagers. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, one of the reasons why I like this particular event is that I did get a chance to go to the hunting camp I never really did, actually. I went to my grandfather's hunting camp here. Uh, this is something I've been waiting for for about five years. And I want to thank Sean for first approaching Dave Canterbury, uh, having, having the, uh, the huevos, as we say in Texas, to approach Dave Canterbury just for a talk. And what came out of that was Dave Canterbury saying, hey, you guys want to come camping at my place? So we want to thank Dave Canterbury for that. And I want to thank everybody who attended here because everybody made an effort towards authenticity. And if you watch my channel at all, at all uh, you know that I view authenticity as a gift we give each other and as a tool that we use for studying this stuff and and everybody here gave of themselves a level of authenticity that allowed me and i'm pretty sure everybody else here to we were talking of earlier i could i could drop my spoon while i was mixing batter turn around and see the 1930s around me it was it was a gorgeous moment. Like I said, it's something I've been waiting for for five years. I do want this thing to continue for the next several years. However long God gives me, I'm going to be coming to this camp every year. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Squirrel Camp 2024. Everybody's getting up, getting their breakfast, getting situated before we go out hunting. Hi, I'm Don Bowlby, and uh, we're down here at the 1924 hunting camp in Jackson, Ohio. And uh, something uh, Sean had organized, and he's done a wonderful job. Um, I'm easily into auto camping, but I also am, like to hunt, too. And uh, I got one this morning, and we just, uh, it's just, just been great. I mean, there's the wonderful camaraderie and all these guys getting together. It's, it's just been something I never expected I'd see too often in my lifetime. Uh, met a lot of really smart guys in the craft and, and hunting, and I'm always willing to learn no matter how old you are. I'm 66, and I'm still picking up things that I've never seen done before. Guess that's about all I got to say about that. <laughs> so we're talking about, you know, what our feelings are and what we thought a hunting camp of the past was like. And I know when I was young and growing up and I was in my early age, being taken to a hunting camp was a privilege for me. And, and watching the men around that hunting camp what they did every day, cooking food, going out and hunting, chopping wood, preparing campfires, all those types of things were kind of a rite of passage for a young man back in that day. And the more you got involved with things, the more you helped clean the game, the more you went out and helped harvest the game. When you killed your first deer and you ate a piece of the heart raw, that was kind of like your rite of passage into manhood. And I think it's, it's something that's missing today. But you know, just out here at this hunting camp this weekend, I'm having the time of my life and I'm not doing anything. And that's why I'm having the time of my life because I'm away from the work that I have to do every single day, which is teaching survival, teaching bushcraft, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
out here, I don't feel like I'm on and I have to teach anything. I just feel like I'm one of a group of guys that are very like-minded and we're just relaxing, having fun, cutting up, giving each other a hard time. And that's kind of what this is all about. It's about a group of guys getting together. It's a fraternity almost of men that's not organized necessarily, of guys that are just like-minded, love to get together, go out, hunt, fish, trap, camp, sit around a campfire and tell stories. And that's really what hunting camp's all about to me. <laughs> Just babies. Okay. You know the problem with a match case is? Feels like a shotgun shell. Yeah. Just Don't need batteries. Size. Okay, here's what you do. I've got to be careful not to dump my sail in a lot of mine. You know, keep it standing up. I do have a beck. I just in case. I've been lighting cigarettes with it all day. That wouldn't be very period proper, though, would it? I know, right? You've got to use at least these matches. You see that? To me, a traditional hunting camp was a uh, place where the men could go out and enjoy being men, get away from a modern society, whatever modern society it was, and just get back to nature, enjoy each other's company, you know, have a good time, get some hunting in, and just enjoy life a little bit. Um, I think it was a very important uh, rite of passage to the uh, guys growing up, and it's, you know, they mentored the younger uh, guys that were there. Um, growing up, we did the same thing. It wasn't a camp, but we'd go out um, on opening deer season, and all the uh, adult males would have their kids, and we'd go, go and learn how to, uh, you know, go deer hunting. Um, I think it's important that we continue that tradition and continue showing the uh, young men of uh, America how to be men and, you know, what that is. And I think uh, traditional hunting camps are an important part of that. So early 20th century camping is unique in that it seems to offer a nice blend of old and new. Uh, metallurgy was along pretty well by that time where firearms could use uh, modern sporting ammunition and uh, you could have a lot of fun uh, with hunting without having to worry about using black powder, things like that but also uh, urbanization and just the busyness of life. A lot of people had gotten tired of it. And so hunting clubs, of course, started very early on, going way, way back hundreds of years. But coming to a hunting camp like this meant that you could lay aside your office job or whatever else you might be doing in a factory to come out and enjoy the wilderness. And wilderness at that point uh, was disappearing uh, we're seeing a lot of the large forests cut down, but there were hunting camps you could go to that were surrounded sometimes by thousands of acres where you could really enjoy getting along with some of your fellow men, guys that had the same loves and desires and may come from many different walks of life. But you had a lot of interest that you shared in common when it came to the outdoors. And so bringing out the camp cookware, the recipes, putting together all the gear sometimes was just as much fun as actually taking the trip itself. As a matter of fact, I've heard it said that packing for a trip is 50% of the fun. But then you came out and, and whether you, you know, got a lot of, of game or not, the camaraderie around the campfire, the campfire stories, and just being able to, for a little bit of time, step out of the rat race, take a big deep breath of fresh air and enjoy the wilderness. And I think that that's something that we should rekindle today. I think it still has value. But I think that's something that we see back then that they did a lot more than we do now, is they would take their time and they really seem to appreciate the need for it. Today we'll run seven hours or seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And we really do need that downtime. So I think that's a big difference. And I think it's something we should work on. I'm Nathan Logston from 20th Century Adventures, and to answer Sean's question, I didn't grow up in a hunting family. My family didn't hunt, my father didn't hunt, it wasn't something that he was interested in. Uh, I had a, a taste of that experience, uh, but for me, I've 
as an adult, I've hosted hunting camps and, uh, and it's always come back to the same thing. And it reminds me of uh, the 90 the year old lady that we bought our farm from a few years back. Uh, I had asked her a question about hunting on the property and what, uh, you know, what kind of experiences people had had or, or uh, you know, what kind of game was on the property. And she said she really didn't know because she had never done any of that. Uh, but her husband enjoyed hunting, but he never hunted on the property. He went off to a camp somewhere else with some of his buddies. And uh, she said that he would always take a six pack of beer with him uh, and he never brought home any game. So she said, I don't really know what went on at those hunting camps, but it probably wasn't a whole lot of hunting. <laughs> and, um, you know, that just kind of brings it home and brings it back to, uh, it's really, it doesn't matter what period or, or what uh, group you're doing it with. It always comes back to the experience with the people. Uh, hunting is not about going out and killing your bag limit or uh, getting some huge trophy big game. Uh, it's about being in the woods, the experience of the woods, and hunting camps are about the experience with other people. It's all about uh, the camaraderie, the fellowship. It's uh, men having social time. Uh, the same way that women get together and have a tea party, men get together at hunting camp. You know, that's, that's the moment of masculine interaction, social time of that period. So uh, I think that's really the ultimate essence of the hunting camp. Woo-wee, was this a good weekend, man. Beautiful weather. It got down to like 32 last night on a, you know Saturday night. And the night before, it got down to the low 40s. So for sleeping outside, it was perfect Ohio weather. You couldn't beat it. Um, we had an incredible time this weekend. The question that was posed to everybody is what was, uh, or what is a traditional hunting camp like in your mind? What would it be? Uh, what should it be? And uh, we got a wide range of different answers. I never got to experience a hunting camp growing up. This is the first hunting camp I've ever experienced. And you know, I, I look at other people's stories and I see the pictures and things. And this weekend was really what a hunting camp was like in my mind. You know, it, uh, it checked off all the boxes. There was so much laughing, so much conversation, camaraderie. There was some trading of gear. And of course, everybody's got their stories for their gear and stories of camping. Um, and of course, we bagged a couple squirrels to boot. We had Dave Canterbury uh, went against my son and I during the Euchre tournament with Edward's son. And Dave and Edward's son won the Euchre tournament to my son's uh, <laughs> competitive sadness. And uh, Edward came all the way from Kansas and he got the camp coffee pot. He's gonna get his name engraved on here. And of course he got a gift uh, as congratulations that he got to take home back to Kansas. But um, he got two squirrels. My son got one, Don got one, and I didn't get any. But you know, that's, that's not what hunting camp's about. The hunting camp I think is all about the camaraderie, uh, swapping stories and telling a few big, big stories and uh, it just, just getting to know each other and just enjoying each other's company and the great outdoors and all the blessings that it bestows. So if you're interested in you know, getting involved in a classic camping, traditional camping, then uh, I encourage you to join us next year. We're going to extend it to four days instead of just two days. And you know, check your area to see if there's classic campers or people like you who would be interested in classic camping and start your own club and start your own events. Um, I hope that this grows because getting to experience historic times just like your grandfather, your grandmother, your great-grandfather, great-grandmother, et cetera, did is so different from like a reenactment. Because when I go to a Civil War reenactment, I'm playing soldier, right? And I'm playing surgeon. But going traditional camping or classic camping or classic hunting, I'm actually doing it. You know, I'm, I'm using the gear, the equipment, the clothing that they had, and I'm learning about it and I'm experiencing it just like they did in that setting. And the vibe that it gets off, the experience is, um, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I, I can't express it any other way other than it's just awesome being able to actually live and experience like they did in the past and get that close to historic reality. 
So if you're interested, like I said, check out, you know, your own clubs and start your own groups. But also, you know, check out the traditional Camp Crafters Guild. You can go to www.honorableoutfitters.com forward slash join the guild. That's uh, my paid community, but there's lots of research great people on there who enjoy classic camping. You can also go on Facebook and join the Amalgamated Order of Motor Campers, campers if you're into motor camping, and that's ran by Nathaniel. And uh, Sarge Vine has the Bannerman's Camp, which is a great group of people as well. And lastly, I want to give some shout outs. I want to give some thanks. First of all, to Dave Canterbury for hosting this event on his property. You know, he, he was an incredible host and it's just beautiful, beautiful land here in Southeastern Ohio. I also want to give a shout out to all those who participated like Don and Edward and Bob and uh, you know, people traveled from Texas and Kansas and Indiana. I want to give a shout out to all the YouTubers as well, like Nathaniel Logsdon, Sarge Vining, and James Bender taking time out of his weekend to come out and spend time with us. It's, it was fun. It, it was great meeting all of you. It was great camping with all of you. And it was a literal honor and a pleasure to be there with you guys. So I hope all of you come back next year. And don't forget to check out the newsletter with some of the pictures. And I'm sure everybody else is posting pictures on their Facebook pages and groups. So check out them as well. Um, so without further ado, I hope you guys like this conversation. And uh, my next video is going to be a review on Nathaniel's shirt that he gave me. So give a kiss hug to your loved ones and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.